Okay. All right. Recording, all yours. Great. Thank you so much. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So this is the Caribbean Climate Network. And with us this evening, we have Amira from Puerto Rico. We have Afifa from Guyana. And we have myself, Katrina, from Trinidad and Tobago. And we are the CCN team. And we're so happy to bring you guys into a, a little bit of a twist on climate advocacy tonight. So it's great for us to have the science-based um, you know, information with adaptation and all the things that are happening in the Caribbean. But we just wanted to give it a little bit of a creative flair where we do something uh, with our hands and we get to share our stories while we create a beautiful painting together. So in the chat, if you'd like to write where you're from and if you have any art experience at all, um, that would be great as well. So we could get to know each other because we're going to be spending the next, let's say, 50 minutes together creating this beautiful piece of art. So in case you hadn't checked the description, there are so many beautiful trees in the Caribbean, but one that connects us all is actually the flamboyant. So we have these beautiful stock images um, of like paintings. I know, especially in Puerto Rico, they're very indicative of uh you know the lifestyle uh where you have this beautiful flaming red tree um set against the backdrop of a beautiful blue caribbean sky um and what we wanted to do is to talk a little bit about the solutions that we can implement in our own backyards uh towards becoming more uh you know climate ready climate disaster ready i guess um, so Caribbean Climate Network, we are in every single country in the Caribbean, and we really do hope that we can share our information with you and that you yourselves can then share back with us and into your own communities about climate adaptation. So please do, you still have some time if you want to grab anybody and grab some paint and bring them in front of their, their Zoom. <laughs> So that they can join with us and we can share a little bit more about the work that we do as well in the Caribbean and the whole Caribbean region from Guyana all the way to Belize. All right, great. So Afifa and Amira, you all have anything else to add? No? All right, great. So we're going to start. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so I am now going to switch over my camera and show you the setup. And uh, let me just stop the video and switch. Wait, switch, right. Okay, so this is still too high, is it? I hope that you guys could see. So this is my canvas here, and this is my palette. So the thing about me and my art is that I try to be as sustainable as possible. So my palette is going to become its own piece of art. <laughs> So this is just a little piece of cardboard. It's not going to leak my paint out onto the surface that I'm working on. And this is stretched canvas. So the difference between stretched canvas and normal uh, paper, and this is just because I want to use it as something going forward. Um, so I invested in a canvas, is that it's actually uh, stretched over a board like this. Right? And it is actually a type of fabric called canvas, right? And I also have two brushes. I have a flat brush and I have a round pointed brush. That's a bit smaller. So the good thing about these is that I'm gonna be showing you all the techniques as well. And I'm sorry about the, these are my used and loved brushes. So <laughs> they look a little worse to wear, but they do the job. So the reason that I have the flat brush is to give a nice big sweeping background. It fills up the space a lot faster. Um, and then you have the small round brush that is going to give the fine little details, like for example, the flowers or the leaves or something like that. Right. And now I think I put it as well that you're going to need all the primary colors. So I am using acrylic paint. So I have my bottles and remember to shake your paints before Right. And what I 
try to teach. Oops, okay. And this is what's going to happen. So please make sure you've protected your surface. I actually have newsprint, which is a recycled paper um, <laughs> behind so that I don't damage my tablecloth. But by the end of this, my hand is going to be completely covered in paint. So please feel free to be messy. Uh, and there's no mistakes. It's all just fun. <laughs> so when you're painting, uh, and especially with acrylic paint. So there are different types of paint. There's oil paint, which takes like two months to dry sometimes, depending on the quality of the paint. Um, there's acrylic paint, which is like a nice medium. There's gesso, there's watercolors, and each one of them is different. So I am using acrylic because it's a nice medium drying paint. It will dry within the time that we have this evening. And these are the usual primary colors that come with uh, any paint kit. And they're, you really don't need the green because you can make green with yellow and blue, right? But these are the six colors basically that I would say that you have to have. Um, if you have brown, I think I have brown, yes. Brown would make things easier, but it's not necessary. So I'll just cover up that. All right. Great. So this is all that you'd need in front of you. You're not going to need. Um... Amira, do you have this? Did you spotlight me by chance? I'm not sure if it'll be recording. The um... Yeah. Great. So this is what we're going to start off with. We have our brushes, we have our paints, and notice that I don't have any water because I'm using acrylic paints and I want to cover my canvas completely. If it is that you're using watercolors, you have to have your water with you and you have to have the appropriate kind of paper because watercolors tend to spread. It's a whole different technique. So we'll be, we'll be using these thicker paints this evening. All right, great. The first thing that we paint is the furthest thing away from the perspective. So we are painting a beautiful Caribbean blue sky. And the way that we're going to go about doing this is that you're actually going to be putting down white first because that's going to make the background workable. Let me get a brush. Let me get a clean brush because I'll be using white and I don't want it to turn into a gray stormy sky. Although, do you know that because of the increase in temperature due to the increase in, in carbon emissions into the atmosphere, that is what's causing all of these storms. I don't know if anybody's experiencing weather right now, but in Trinidad and Tobago, we're having a lot of extreme weather leading to flooding and other you know, disaster like events and they can cause a lot of loss of life and a loss of profit property. So it's definitely something we have to think about with our changing climate in this region. So as you can see, this is how I loaded my brush with white. Yeah. And there are three ways that you can paint. You can go left and right. These are just the basic techniques I'm showing you today. Okay. You can go up and down or you can pat. And with each of these, there's a different texture that you're gonna get in your painting, right? So the first thing that I'm doing is that our sky is on our horizon. So we're painting left and right with our white paint just to lay down a little foundation for our sky because our clouds are white and fluffy and beautiful, especially if it's a lovely clear day. So we're setting up our Caribbean sky left and right. And also remember, if you, like, for example, I am using canvas. Oops, sorry, my rig is showing here. Everything is moving. Okay. <laughs> Left and right. And I decided that my sky is going to end about here. So I'm going to just fill in this whole area with white paint. And because I'm wearing, I'm using canvas, I'm going over my edges. So up over the sides where the canvas spreads over the side of the, the frame. Make sure that you put enough paint as well to make sure that you don't have any of those little textures in the thing. If it's paper, it's going to be fine because it's already smooth. Um, but if it is that it's canvas like mine, you want to make sure that you put 
enough um but paint onto it so that you would have a smooth finish because you don't want a sky with little squares <laughs> unless it's your will and you want to have a sky with little squares <laughs> always remember to use lots of paint um at the start just to lay down that foundation for later great so i just put down some white paint like that and before it dries, I'm going to dip straight in with the same brush. I'm not doing anything. I just wiped it straight onto the canvas. And I'm picking up some beautiful blue, blue sky. I'm putting blue sky onto my paintbrush. Right? And as you can see, it's blending with the white. Isn't that cool? So I'm just moving that paint onto the white, from the white to the blue. And I'm creating our wispy clouds. If you want it more blue, you add more blue. And at this point, if you want it more white, you just dip back into the white and you continue going. And you see, I'm naturally building the clouds that are in our lovely Caribbean sky. And you see, I'm just picking up paint and, and moving it around. I'm not even like, I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary here. I'm just moving my hand left and right. I'm using my wrist and I'm moving pretty fast because I want to make sure that the paint does not dry too fast. And I lose that blendability. If that makes any sense, if I just made up that word, that's okay. <laughs> so this is a lovely clear blue sky. This is what we think of when we think of the Caribbean. If an external person was thinking about the Caribbean, they'd be like, yeah, beautiful blue skies, but we know that we are susceptible to a lot of different uh, disasters dealing with our climate um, and changing weather patterns. So I don't know if anybody is willing, since we're now finishing up our nice blue sky, if you want to unmute your mic and tell us a little bit about an experience that you had with extreme weather in the Caribbean, because as we know, that is a direct, uh, impact of climate change. So I welcome anybody to open up their mics if they want. Tell us a little bit about the weather where you are and how you've seen a change. I mean, for me, I've seen a change a lot. Anybody? Is everybody okay? You can unmute and ask for help if you need help. Does it look good so far? <laughs> so most importantly, is everybody seeing well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Nice. Thank you. Okay, so as I move down my canvas, I'm just keeping, I'm adding on white, I'm adding in white again. So it depends now on what kind of topography you have in your painting right? We're doing anything that you want. This is going to be hanging on your wall in your home. So, oh, thank you. Is it Sai? Am I, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, definitely flooding patterns yes, yeah. have been, yeah, thank you. It have been really, um, have been really different now. Like, I think when I was little, um, well, I'm from Trinidad, um, places that have not flooded before are flooding now. So in my painting, I want to have some mountains. Um, I'm going to paint to the northern range of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, Trinidad. And I don't know if you want to do that as well, because it could just be a flat plain for you. It could be uh, mountains. It could be a forest. If you wanted to do a forest, you could do a forest as well. But let me start with my mountain range. So I'm just dipping a little bit of black paint and I'm creating a little gray because black is very, very hard to paint over, right? So I'm just creating a little gray and I'm gonna start with a little outline of some mountains, some very random because I can't, I don't have a reference picture for our mountain range, but I think it looks something like this. 
print and I just sketch that with some gray paint on my brush, right? Just very, very lightly. And I'm filling it in with the gray. And this is our far, far background, right? This is nothing that's going to be in our foreground. Our foreground is going to be our um, flamboyant tree, hemi immortal, sorry, flamboyant tree um, and our sustainable house, right? So this is my, it looks like snow. Why did I use gray? Anyway, I'm going to start turning it into a tropical forest, right? This is the hard rock that came up millions of years ago. And now we're doing succession. So I don't know if there are any biologists here tonight. We're going to start doing some trees. <laughs> are there any biologists in the room that want to talk about the trees? <laughs> so with the same brush, right? I just loaded it up with brown and green to make it like a little like tropical foresty and I'm just dabbing touch 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 very very lightly just adding those trees that have taken so many thousands of years to be to become a, a lovely tropical rainforest and humans have then destroyed within the space of a very short time Yeah, but we need resources. That's the thing. Humans needed resources to do what they had to do. But what, uh, like along the way, why did we have to become so unsustainable? So I want my future forest to be, well, my future uh, northern range to be fully forested due to some reforestation programs that we hopefully will maintain. I hope that I'm not going too fast for everybody. So this is just one type of tree. We're going to add in a lot of different species because we know that biodiversity is super, super important, especially in a changing climate. We need a lot of biodiversity to give us all the resources that we require to survive. So like even medicinal plants, timber plants that can have a better um, recovery period than our long standing trees. We can have planned areas where we have agroforestry and we are able to have food security finally. And I think that I'm speaking of my own experience as well as everybody else's. So if anybody else wants to talk about like some of the vulnerabilities that they see in their countries, in their communities that are coming up because of climate, please do unmute and just share with us. It definitely is similar in Guyana. Um, I mean, with the changing weather, we have like the, well, in Guyana, we usually have like rainy season. We have um, two rainy season and then and the dry season and two, two dry season. So like farmers would definitely plan how they plant their crops. You know, we have like rice is a main crop here in Guyana. So they would plant the rice just before the rainy season so that the fields would get flooded. And with changing climate, all of that changes. It's like you can't really predict anymore. Like, should I plant my crops now? Or sometimes you plant it and it don't get, the field doesn't get flooded. Or sometimes the rain comes early before harvesting and all sorts of things happen. And it's just kind of linking with the changing weather and um, how it affects our agriculture here. And we also have issues with overtopping, with sea level rise, overtopping of the sea walls because we're along the coast. And oh, yeah. then we have sea lion intrusion because our farmlands are like right <laughs> next to the seawall. So it's just like really closely linked with our food security here. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't even think about the overtopping of the seawall. And all of that is salt water intrusion and that changes our soil because salt, you, not many plants can adapt to withstand a saltier place. So 
I know in, in Trinidad, we had the Carney Swamp that was actually modified to increase the amount of fresh water in a certain area so that we could grow rice. And that has permanently altered the ecosystem because they then built a road <laughs> to separate the salt from the fresh water. And then that affected the type of um, plants and animals that lived there. And so for example, the salad ibis needed the freshwater red crabs and now they can't get them anymore. And that's gonna change a lot. So changing ecosystems actually increases our vulnerability to climate related threats. All right, so I just brought it down a little bit. So it's kind of like I wanted my forest to be coming closer to where I am now. And from there, I'm just gonna be adding some white paint to create a little foreground. This is called color blocking. So I'm just blocking in different zones in my painting. Oops, happy accidents, don't worry. <laughs> I'm gonna have a messy painter. <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so I want my forest to come down off the mountain into a beautiful savanna, because again, for the biologists that are here, we want nice plant succession and we want sustainable human interaction with our environment. So this is now the human zone. Yes, we're going to be living in tandem with nature. So we're going to be still going out into the forest and stuff, but we can have our society take up a small area as well and just live in tandem with nature. So we're thinking about it. We can think about just our homes where we live right now and the things that are sustainable and the things that are unsustainable. And we'll come back to that. So I'll let you guys think about your current situations, and then we could talk about some solution building. Great. So this is our little clearing. And if you so choose, you can do like a water feature. You can do a little stream. Uh, I'm going to leave us in some dry spot somewhere. But of course we know that humans need water for our um, human activities mostly. So you can work on that as well. So in my little future Trinidad, that's hopefully going to be a little more sustainable than it is now. I am going to be putting my flamboyant tree off to the side, right? Um, this is totally preference, my preference. I prefer to have my tree off to the side and my focus be our sustainable house, right? So I just use the same brush again. I didn't even clean it. You're seeing how I'm just dipping straight into the paint. And I am going to say that trees grow from the roots to the sky, right? So I'm starting my tree here and I'm just pulling this up. And that's my main trunk. So let me just bring back. I like to be, um anatomically correct, right? <laughs> so this is a flamboyant tree. Let me just pull it up bigger. So this is going to be my reference picture. So as you can see, this tree has a fork in the middle. I think some of them don't, so it really depends. Um, and it branches outward like that. And the leaves are quite few, but the flowers are very many. All right, so this is my context for the flamboyant tree. I am going to pretend that this was a branch going that way and this branch is going that way and then I have another branch going like that. So that looks pretty much like a flamboyant, I think, and a little extra space on the ground just for indication of your roots. And I fill in just barest, barest indication of the branches. So we know plant biology is a focusing at the focus. Right, okay. So plant biology, we know that nutrients go up from the roots into the tree. So we know that the tree grows in the same direction. 
and it's going to go out to the smaller branches which break apart from the main stem and flamboyant trees are quite branchy and a wide top so i'm just making very random i know it looks a little messy but i'm just creating that we know that this is the basic shape of the flamboyant tree without any uh, flowers or foliage right now with the same brush again if you all notice i haven't changed brushes yet <laughs> i'm going in with the red paint actually no scratch that i'm going to go in with some green because i forgot there's less green the red is really how it grows is that the leaves come out and then the flowers so you're going to be seeing the flowers first and then the leaves so you're going in with some green and we're just going to be just a little tapping remember i told you about tapping so i'm tapping on some foliage some leaves onto our flamboyant and the great thing about tropical trees is that they're built for our heat in the Caribbean region, right? So I'm just creating little bits of leaves onto our branches. It doesn't have to be a lot, right? And this is just me tapping. You're seeing me just tapping straight onto the, the canvas. Wow, that is fuzzy, hold on. Focus, focus. I want you all to see. Is that better? Yes. Yes. Not much better. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it a bit clearer. I'll pull it up. Okay. So this is how it looks. And as you can see, this is my wet paint here. And very thinly, I just dotted the leaves on. So it's just the barest indication of leaves. All right. So Wow, that's fuzzy, hold on. Ah, that's better, okay. Now, <laughs> with the same brush, I'm just wiping off as much green as I can. I'm gonna scoop up our red paint. So as you can see, it's like that. And I'm just going to start blobbing on the red. And the red is going to start mixing with the brown that is on my brush and create shadows. Isn't that pretty? Wow. So shocked that this is coming out so well. <laughs> Does anyone here know if this is a um a pollinating species? I can't remember. I was supposed to do some research before I started, but I didn't. Well, anyway, flowering flowering plants are very cool in the Caribbean region because they support so many different wildlife. So, for example, certain flowering trees are very good for. Um, pollinating species to get their nutrients and then to also hop across to other plants and spread pollen and create bigger pockets for biodiversity and of course other environmental services. Great, that's very red. Cool, that looks like a flamboyant tree, I think. Very red. So this is our beautiful background. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'm good, I'm just a bit behind. Sorry, go ahead, Tisha. I'm not saying I did all right as well. Great, and I'm seeing Joyce is enjoying it because in Puerto Rico, we know that the flamboyance is everywhere. <laughs> I 
All right, great. So this is our background. Now, in my uh, future Trinidad, I guess, um, I am, well, I guess my future house. <laughs> Let's just say my future house. <laughs> Let's see if I can mix a slightly lighter brown. And I'm going to just do a little outline. So let's say this is like my family's future sustainable home, mini home, right? So I just created a little, a little tan. So let's just say someday, we're able to get some sustainable building materials. So like some composite that's made out of hay or mushrooms or something that's really innovative and cool. And it's gonna change the whole like future of building because it's like earthquake resistance, hurricane proof. Um, and I think that uh, you know, it's not common to see, but a round house is actually better in terms of the wind. So let's say I'm going to just create a cylinder. Now, this is not to scale, okay? This is, okay, this is like our bunker or something outside, right? Let's paint a bunker. Because this is definitely not to scale. <laughs> What what color is that? So this is like a brown, but with white. So I mixed white and brown. Because I'm thinking if it's something made out of um, hay or like mushrooms or something, because I, I saw this um, documentary on how they're transforming building materials in a lot of places in the world. So, I mean, we could have, I mean, we have, so much heat and wetness in the Caribbean. Why don't we grow mushrooms? And like, there's mushroom leather, and there's mushroom. Uh, you know, food is is a big thing as well. It's a great protein source. So I don't know. I'm hoping that future Trinidad has a lot of mushroom production. <laughs> I'll be very happy if we do. Right. And I'm just making a little dome as well for the top. So it's a very stable structure in terms of design. I know that we don't really have building codes in Trinidad, right? But if we were planning for a disaster, the structure itself can be something like this because this is wind resistant, right? And I'm just gonna be, oops. Use this. So this is my imagination, okay? Your imagination could be something completely different. You could be painting like a normal house with a roof um, and then put solar panels on the top of it. This is just what I would like <laughs> to see sometime in the future. So we're discussing solutions. And one of the things that I hope to have is space and time to have my own little community garden with my neighbors. Does anyone else have any uh, solutions that they are implementing or want to implement in order to decrease uh, vulnerability and increase adaptation? All right, let's think about all the things that are going to happen if climate changes in the Caribbean. So we know sea level rise is a major one. So what is something that we can do in our houses 
to make us less vulnerable to sea level rise. We could, if we're starting off, we can build on stilts and that could make sure that we don't get flooded out every time it rains. And of course we have to do studies to see how high it's going to actually lift or like how much water is gonna come in. We can actually plant plants that are resistant to salt. Like on the seasides in Trinidad, we have a lot of um, salt resistant plants. What else can happen because of climate? Well, one thing that I was thinking of is um, a demand for energy and like becoming off the grid. So I'm just mixing some black and some blue and I'm gonna put a few solar panels on this roof. And this can be used to offset uh, energy consumption. It could be used to heat water. It could be whatever it is uh, that you want as well. So this is my little solar panel that hopefully someday will be more affordable, hopefully very soon. Do any of you have solar and would like to share that your experience? It is something very rare. Someday. <laughs> yeah, it's still very rare in our region because of the cost. Does this look like a solar panel? <laughs> I'm trying my best, but I'm trying to make the little squares more blue. Hang on, I'll see if we can see it better when I pull it closer to the screen. Yeah, if you could put like some white lines between yeah. it, I think it might look a bit more like a square. Yeah. So I'm also a shortcut artist. So if like I don't like how it looks at the end, I would take a marker and just like go back in with very fine lines. <laughs> okay, let's hope I can get some very fine lines. Ooh, okay. Nope. No cigar. Oh well, it's odd. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> These are my solar panels. Maybe when it dries, it'll look a bit better. <laughs> Okay, another thing, like, for example, if we have um, rooftop gardens, so that was something that I want to do. So if I build a little trough around here, I can, like, grow my little seasonings. So I'm just going to add some little seasoning, and that'll actually help with cooling on the roof as well. So a little green roof. And of course, this all depends on where the sun is in your region and what's possible, right? All right, what are some other solutions that we can do on our homes that will help us to become like, well, to adapt? What can help us adapt better to climate? All right, I could give a clue. So, with an increase in temperature, an increase in sea level, we also are going to see either an increase or a decrease in overall rain and water, fresh water. 
So it's interesting to look at that water scarcity as um, something to look at. So we're going to have rainfall. We, we all have our wet and dry seasons. Some of us multiple, some of us only one. And so rainwater harvesting is a great way. So I'm just going to put a gutter around the roof. And that is going to trap rainwater when the rains come. Okay, that is not gonna look like a rain. Let's, let me see, how do I fix this? This is a gutter. <laughs> Let's pretend this is a gutter. Right. And then a little hose is gonna come down here and it's going to fill into our nice blue barrel. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. That's around the back of the house, right? So you're just seeing my little rainwater system hanging out, right? I've seen a lot of um, implementation for rainwater harvesting recently. So my hope is that it will become something mainstream. I know in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of problems with our legislation. So legislative change is necessary for things to change overall, right? Yeah. And I kind of find that surprising because like here in Guyana everybody has a black tank like when water harvested is like something that it's a basic in Guyana and it also surprised me when you said that your dad doesn't have building codes because here in Guyana um like building your house on stilts is part of the building code but it's not really implemented because everyone wants kind of like a fancy house but it is part of the building code that's so cool. That's interesting. So the fancy house idea is what I have seen happening in Trinidad. And I know like during, like say hurricanes, a lot, we don't even have hurricanes here. And we have like just strong winds and inverted commas, which isn't really that strong. And our roofs are blowing away. And it's because we don't have the implemented building codes. Um, we don't have people that are investing in the proper infrastructure and stuff like that. It's it's very sad um, because we're losing a lot of property uh, because of it, you know? I'm going to start with my horizontal lines. My solar panels are suffering, but it's okay. I'll fix them later. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad. Okay, that actually looks like a solar panel now. Yay. All right. So anybody else has any suggestions as to how I can make my little bunker more uh, sustainable or able to withstand hurricanes or any other climate uh, events that are going to be happening. So I have water, I have food security because I'm planting my little garden. I have electricity stability, energy sustainability because of my solar panels. Oh, I designed these little portholes because it will help um, keep the, the home cool, I think, because it lets in less light. Um, and then of course you can also do the shutters for like hurricane shutters. So like, how do I do that? Okay, let's just say they have shutters on the ground, like ready to go in case of anything. So they'll just attach those over the portals, right? So all of this is structurally sound. It's a round house, so the wind will blow around it. There's no roof to blow away. You're securing your solar panels properly. What else can we do as like normal 
everyday citizens to keep ourselves uh, less vulnerable. Amira, if you don't have any other ideas for me to add to this little bunker that I built. <laughs> does it look out of a sci-fi movie? It does look like a little UFO. <laughs> it does. It almost looks like it's on wheels. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm just going to add the final little touches to make it more realistic. So I'm creating some grass that's growing outside. Does anyone else have any suggestions as to solutions to keep our homes more climate resilient? I'm thinking, but I don't see how it will fit. <laughs> Another tree just for like cooling down purposes, but yes. I don't think well, it will I forgot fit. To mention that. Thanks. So yeah, the reason that we have the tree in the first place is because trees provide so much shade and they'll keep us cool because in Trinidad we're raining heavily, but it's super hot. I'm sweating. If I didn't have air conditioning, I would be in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, if you have the space in your um, painting to add another tree, so like another tree can come on this side just to go over and balance it. These are all great uh, solutions. So as you can tell, my palette is a mess, but like I said, it is cardboard and I am going to turn this now into another painting. <laughs> um, so yes, rainwater harvesting, solar power, the tree for shade, a green ecosystem that's fresh and clean in the background that's not um, disrupted by any big human uh, constructs nothing unsustainable we have our natural uh soil that could be like when the rain falls it percolates into the soil so we don't have to worry about flooding um this is basically how it's supposed to be and we're just able to walk to work or we have internet so we're working remotely um everything we need we have like community gardens so that we can get our food. We have fresh rainwater that we can filter and boil at home. I mean, this is how the rural Trinidad and Tobago and I think most rural areas in the Caribbean are. And I think that we have just gotten so accustomed to the capitalist society that we're in that this does not look normal anymore. Um, but this is really how it could have progressed uh, for us in the region. Yes, we're going to always want to fly and have planes and have big fancy houses and jobs, but there are still solutions that we can implement, even if we have those things. So like planting trees, having your own little gardens, collecting rainwater, having some things that are off the grid. You can even put like a little um, propeller for wind. Um, there are lots of different solutions now. So this is just my personal view of like what I would love to see in the future. And of course, when you're finished with your painting, um, you sign your name. Uh, so I usually do my initials and the year. Oops, that was absolutely terrible. So I am probably gonna take a marker and fix that later. And you always sign your painting when you're finished. All right, let me just show you some more reference images if you wanted to do something a little different. So I really liked this painting. Um, it was like the tree and the building were merged together. Uh, I thought this was really pretty. And uh, then there was this one. I really like this one. So you could have put the little pathway going to the house and the stream with the beautiful blue Caribbean sky. And you can see the forest in the background. And of course, remember, we wanted to be very biodiverse. So they have a little farm, little garden here. We don't know if they have chickens and we don't know if they're 
doing um, other things to make themselves a little bit more sustainable. Uh, this little nook here could have been a little bit of hydro energy coming from there. Oh, and if you wanted to put in some birds, you can do that too. Um, so these were the kinds of images that you could have come up with. So if anybody is willing to share, I hope everybody's kind of finished. Um, I'm going to switch my camera back in a moment. And maybe if anybody's like to, they can share so we can see what you have been doing. <laughs> so here's my painting. It really does look like a little mobile home bug, a bug home. <laughs> Let's see. We have to take some, some snapshots of our paintings together, okay? And I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this session. What's that word, size? S-W-A-L-E-S. -E I'm not familiar. Um, I was noting the possibility of swales as well. I know that's something a lot of people tend to integrate um, when they grow food forests. They have swales that can, they, those are like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's something like a, a channel, I guess. So if oh, it rains yeah. a lot, it stores right. water, so like it stream. mitigates flooding. Yeah, nice. and it okay. could help with keeping moisture for plants if you're growing a large garden. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that's definitely one. Uh, so integrate that into your little world <laughs> future there. And um, I just want to take, we have five more minutes left until the call has to end. So I am very grateful to the Caribbean Climate Network for allowing me to fulfill my you know, passions for art as well as education with regards to climate adaptation. So I really hope that all of you, I know that, you know, you all are doing so much uh, in your own communities. So I'm hopeful that you will join us and we will be able to amplify our actions together towards reducing our vulnerability in the face of climate change. So it's getting hotter. It's getting harder to, to get the resources that we need to survive. And by pulling together as a region, we can tackle our both individual issues and our common issues and find solutions that are really homegrown and indigenous. Um, and yeah, I don't know if anybody's willing to take off their, their cameras and, and see how it goes. And I'm gonna show you now how I'm gonna I, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this, but let's see what happens. <laughs> so anybody wants to show us what's happening on their side, you can put your cameras on, you can unmute and just tell us how was the experience. It's not done yet, but there, there's something there. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Something's happening. <laughs> yeah, something is happening. So you can just keep working on it until you're ready. And remember that if you want to step away from it, paintings aren't supposed to just be one done. That's it. You can actually go back to this in a month or two with fresh eyes and fresh paints. Um, so don't rush and make sure you paint what it is that you want to see in your future. I don't know what to call it. Your future settlements, your future community, your future life. All right, anyone else wants to share? I don't mind sharing as well. Um... But just as one note or disclaimer, I am living under my tree because I don't have a house yet. Ah, that's okay. okay. <laughs> okay I'm just trying to turn my camera around. Uh, so what we have so far is just a tree. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. 
Okay, so the difference with the tree is that you put in details with the trunk, so light and dark, the shading is beautiful. The sky is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, you're an artist. <laughs> that could be like a concept painting. I feel like we need to do an exhibition again, Amira. <laughs> we need to tell everybody you want to finish this, send us an image <laughs> and we put it up on the Facebook and Instagram and the websites. If you guys are up for it, do let us know. <laughs> absolutely beautiful I can't wait to see the house <laughs> unless the house is any tree because I'll be cool I'm I'll invested now I need updates like like I can't <laughs> sleep without knowing how that painting <laughs> ended up <laughs> All right, so this is my abstract background that I'm gonna probably do something with it later. Should it be this way or this way? I'll see, however I feel, maybe this way. It kind of looks, you know what this reminds me of? This is like the earth cooling down. You know how they're saying that everything is now red? So this kind of looks like the opposite when it's cooling back down. <laughs> the temperature is going down, oh no, global cooling. It's already snowing in um in Canada. My brother's in Toronto. And I, I'm just like, this is so strange. It, it's never snowing this early. So it's obvious things are happening, things are changing. All right, so it's seven o'clock. I invite you all please to check out the website that has been posted in the chat and join us on our journey towards a, a Caribbean that is you know, brimming with adaptation potential towards saving lives in the face of climate change. Thank you all so very much. Um, should I, should we take a picture? All right, if anybody wants to turn their cameras on, we would really appreciate it. And if you can hold it, and I don't know if anybody can help me take a picture. I don't know if Amira or FIFA have that capability. <laughs> wow, look at that. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm far from finished. I'm a very slow painter. No, that's so beautiful. I love it. I love it. Um, Afifa in Guyana, where is their their mountains? Is it more in the interior? Yeah, it's in the interior. So where most persons live, it's on the coast. Mm. Uh, but once you go inland, you have like mountains and then farther in you have the savannas. Nice. That's so cool. It's like it has zones. Yeah, we have four natural regions, we call them. So the low coastal plain, then hilly sand and clear region. So it's more sandy, where we have quarries oh, and so yeah. forth. Then we have the highland region, which is the forests, and then the interior savannas, which is hills and savannas. That's so cool. All right, well, let's take the picture. I think that everybody who wants to be in the picture has put on the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Amira, could you hold up your painting? Smile. Thank you, Opifa. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right, great. Well, thank you all so very much. I'm going to log off now. If anybody needs help, let me know now. <laughs> Did you guys enjoy? Okay, and yes, definitely for sharing the final pieces afterwards. Um, are you all on the WhatsApp chat? Well, once you sign up, actually, Amira, should we put the um, the email address? Uh, yeah, if, if you want to share your email. 
and we have their emails as well from their registration. Right. So like follow up and yeah, and we have our CCN meeting in a week and a half on November 29th. So anyone who wants to join is welcome. Yeah, and we have lots of fun things to come as well for the holidays. All right, well, thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>